Hey guys, welcome back. It's Christy with Oak Hill Millworks and I'm out here in my freezing cold shop. So I'm gonna try to make this quick, but I wanted to shoot out here to show you guys just how cold it is. Right now it's 24 degrees in the shop. And this is a problem because my Onefinity CNC is just on the other side of that wall over there. And according to this statement that I found on Onefinity Supports forum, the machine isn't actually supposed to be run under 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So me putting it in my garage in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania might not be the best play. Um, so in this video, I'm going to quickly detail for you four potential solutions to avoid the problem of having your CNC in too cold of an environment so that you can protect your investment, right? So here we go. Okay. So number one, keep your CNC inside your house. If you can, most likely you have a climate controlled house and that's the easiest and most obvious way to keep it in a comfortable working environment. Number two. If you have to keep your CNC outside in a garage workshop that's not attached to your house like I do, um, another easy-ish option is to unplug the control box and the monitor and take them inside. If you just store them inside at room temp, they'll stay safe and be ready for operation the next time you go to use your CNC. I don't love that option personally because I don't want to keep un unplugging and replugging all these cables that go in the back side of the control box. I think if I remember correctly, there's, oh, let's see, the main power cord, the power cord for the monitor, uh, four cables for your rails and your spindle, um, the USB stick that is for the monitor. Da, 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 da. Anyways, you get the point. If you're okay with unplugging it and replugging back in all those cords every time you take it in the house and bring it back out, then that's probably the most cost effective way because you don't have to buy anything. You just have to actually be aware enough to do it. The third option for how to keep your control box warm or at a constant temperature for your CNC is to heat your workspace. It's the most expensive, most labor intensive, hardest option to pursue. My garage is not, it's not even studded out. We don't have walls. We just have cinder block walls. So to have to put up walls, insulation, um, and actually pay to heat the space would be really costly and labor intensive. And like I said, that's just not something that I want to invest in right now. So that brings me to my next and what I think is the best option. Number four is to build a little box just around your control box. Um, this way you can tuck the monitor in there. That's easy to unplug real quick. Put that in there and heat it with a simple light bulb. Ah, light bulb. It's a great idea, right? Light bulbs actually produce enough warmth to keep a small space warm. <laughs> Side note, my dad actually made a little box with a plexiglass lid for our outdoor cats when we were little and he heated it with a light bulb, put a little blanket in there. We had cats. I think they might've been strays. I don't know, but they weren't really allowed inside the house. So that's, that's how we compromised and gave them their little house that kept them warm and cozy. Okay. Back to what I was saying. So I'm not going to show you how I built the box because I'm guessing if you own a CNC, you can probably build a, a rudimentary box. It doesn't need to be anything special. I'll show you a couple clips as I continue to describe to you what exactly I'm talking about and some things to think about. Okay, so some of the main considerations for building this box to surround your control box would be size. I don't think it needs to be a super big box, but I didn't want to make it really tiny either. I wanted there to be some natural airflow happening in there because your light bulb's going to put off some heat. Your machine while you're using it is going to put off some heat and there is a cooling fan built into the Onefinity control box. So you want the air to be able to move a little bit. Um, the door that I put on mine is not like super tight fitting. There's actually a little gap at the top and that wasn't exactly intentional. It had a couple design flaws. I was thinking it was going to be a sliding door and then it ended up needing hinges. The hinges kind of left a gap there, but 
Anyways, it ended up being kind of a blessing in disguise because that way some airflow can still be exchanged with the outside air, but that box interior will still stay at a pretty constant temperature. So I believe my sizing overall was somewhere around 22 inches long and about 10 inches wide. The other thing you wanna think about is the wattage of the bulb you're gonna use. What I did was just use a ceramic socket and my dad had actually had this laying around his garage of course, and um, he wired up a cord with it with a little on off switch. And so I simply drilled a hole with a Forstner bit and put the socket through the hole and then screwed the bulb in on the inside of the box to keep it upright and not you know, coming into contact with anything. In order to keep track of the temperature inside my box, I just ran down to my local hardware store and picked up a simple thermometer for a couple bucks. And now I can look through my little plexiglass window and see what temperature is in there. That way I can make sure that doesn't overheat too. If you do wanna try a slightly different approach, cause this was just like something I kinda just rigged up out of nowhere. I had seen an interesting YouTube video um, by chance. Another guy was kind of experiencing some problems using his in cold temperature and he thought maybe keeping the box warm would fix that. And so he built one as well. So I'll show you his version. I'll link it in the description for you to check out and consider that. But um, one cool thing you could use alternatively, instead of just a light bulb and just a thermometer, uh, you can pick up these temperature regulators. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but they're like 12 bucks on Amazon or something. I'll put the link in the description. Um, basically you would plug your light that you're using as your heat source into that and you can actually set a temperature on it and it'll regulate for you so that light isn't always on. I, I kind of wanted to do that because I kind of like the tech behind it but um, I decided well this is what I have on hand right now. I'm going to make it work and knowing what I pay per kilowatt hour um, times the wattage of the bulb it was going to cost me very little to keep the bulb on all the time for the four months or so in the winter that I would need it. So I just did what was easy. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope it was helpful. If you made it this far, and I really appreciate it when people watch the videos the whole way through, comment below, bacon. That tells me that you were really here for it. You watched the entire video and you're gonna get a virtual pat on the back because I appreciate you. So anyways, I gotta go warm up because I've been freezing this whole time in my 24 degree garage. So, see ya. If you do build a box like this, if you wanna make it easier on yourself to be able to plug all those cables in after you've built the box, make the bottom panel. I don't know if they would call that floating or whatever, but I basically just ran a groove through all the sides on my table saw, as you can see in the back there. And I did not glue the bottom panel in so that I can, anytime I need to access the back of that control box without, you know, unscrewing it, I can just remove this panel from beneath as far as I need to and reach up in there and uh, get access to the wiring. So that's pretty important. And that's my box.